at the time I'm making this video, it's 2024, and it's been 20 years since Lithuania officially became a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, otherwise known as NATO, or I guess NATO as the Lithuanians would pronounce it. As I mentioned in previous videos, once Lithuania regained its independence, joining NATO was high on the list, primarily as a form of protection against the future threat of another Russian invasion and occupation. So today's video discusses the United States and its influence in getting Lithuania's armed forces towards that NATO standard. The foundation of this video will be an interview that I had with a member of the US Marine Corps who was himself involved in those early years in liaising with Lithuania's military, transitioning it away from its Soviet structure. So let's get started. So, in 1990, Lithuania declares its independence from the Soviet Union. One year later, the Russian government recognized Lithuania's independence, and then it only withdrew its military completely in 1993. As I already stated, after regaining its independence, Lithuania was keen on joining NATO as soon as possible, and a number of countries were instrumental in achieving this goal. Most of you will know that I've already made a few videos about Lithuania's military, and I've had pretty good feedback about them. One Lithuanian soldier reached out to offer some rations, which I made a video about, and then the Lithuanian Marines even shared my video about them to their Facebook page, which is quite the honor. Quite recently, a member of the US military reached out to me, identifying himself as a past member of the Military Liaison Team, or MLT, to Lithuania in 1995. He told me that the members of the American Military Liaison Team were the true architects behind the westernization of Lithuania's military. He told me that his team's blueprints for Lithuania were even used by other MLTs in Eastern Europe to assist with their mission. Here's what he said to me in an email. We lay the foundation for what the military is today. And then he added, unsung and unknown by the Lithuanians themselves, the MLT and our Lithuanian staff dedicated long hours to getting the Lithuanian military the necessary changes and training they needed. So of course I asked this person if he was willing to appear in a video and do an interview, and he generously agreed. So, meet retired Major Walter Leitmeier, but he calls himself Walt these days. Walt described what his team's mission was during the mid-90s in Lithuania. I apologize in advance for the poor video quality. We were having connection issues. The program started in 93. And they sent out, basically, they sent five people to Lithuania. One of the requirements at first was Lithuanian language background, which, as you know, is it's like a needle in a haystack. And they did okay. They had, I think, out of the five they originally sent, Three of them actually had a Lithuanian background and could speak Lithuanian. The next year progressed, they realized they couldn't find these people, so they looked for people with some kind of Eastern European background or something like that, which didn't work out well. I actually saw the request for somebody to work at the program at my old unit, and so I, I put my name in there. I actually asked for Bulgaria because I spoke Russian, I read Russian, so I said, okay, well, Bulgarian, eh, that's pretty, pretty common. And I was very fortunate to get picked for Lithuania. So by the time I got there, they had four members on the team. None of us spoke Lithuanian, no guidance. I mean, the only guidance we had was that Lithuanians wanted to get into, into NATO, and we had to figure out what they needed to do to become, become part of NATO. They were, you know, just talk to them, let them schedule what they want to schedule. So we basically built a foundation and met with all the units we could. In fact, we met with all the units, all the uh, Iron Wolf battalions. We were situated in office buildings within the, uh, the volunteer force, SCAT headquarters there in Vilnius. So we worked very closely with SCAT and the uh, general staff, commanding general with the defense minister, Linus Lincolnkevich. One of the things they left with us was they never said anything like if the Russians come back. It was always when the Russians come back. So they looked at that, that basically becoming part of NATO was their way of staying and as a nation. They had to become part of NATO. Really pushed that into our heads and I picked it up and I, to this day I still think so Walt provided me with a publication discussing the history of America's Joint Contact Team program. I'm going to read almost word for word from this document, and particularly the section about Lithuania. The Lithuanian Defense Forces, which the liaison team came to assist, consisted of seven services, all under the Ministry of Defense. This included SCAT, the Iron Wolf Brigade, the Civil Defense Department, the Medical Service, the Border Guards, the Lithuanian Air Force, and the Naval Flotilla. Most of the officers of the standing forces had been career officers in the Soviet armed forces. As such, they were not entirely trusted by the SCAT, whom they considered poorly trained amateurs. For those who don't know, SCAT stands for Sevenoreškosos Krasto Apsalkos Tarnebos. I'll just note here that it was the precursor to today's National Defense Volunteer Force, or KASP. So, Lithuania drafted enlisted personnel into the standing forces, but the SCAT enlisted force was all volunteer. 
equipment for its armed forces was limited almost entirely to material left behind by the departing Russians. When the liaison team arrived in Vilnius, the Lithuanians provided an office in the SCAT headquarters building on Lysvest Prospectus in the northwest section of the city. At first, team members lived in hotel rooms, but eventually moved to rented facilities scattered around Vilnius. The first task facing the liaison team was to identify the subject areas of interest to the military and develop a country work plan. Until the Americans arrived, the Lithuanians had only the Soviet model upon which to pattern their armed forces. And basically we went out and talked to everybody we could, our own observations, and then we made a blueprint of this is what they need and this is what we can, uh, we can give you. The only handicap we had was our program was supposed to be non-lethal. So we could do any training we wanted to that wasn't lethal training. Of course, that's not what the Lithuanians wanted. <laughs> they were very really adamant about doing stuff like sniper training, engineer training. Politically, they were worried about what the Russians might think about it. So they were trying to show the Russians they weren't trying to arm Eastern European nations against Russia. Basically, that was the whole idea was. They were dedicated. They wanted to, you know, to keep Lithuania free, but they were just so they were so limited. They had equipment, but it was old Soviet. It was whatever, whatever the so whatever the Russians left behind. Um, so sometimes I may call them Soviets, but I really mean Russians. They left the equipment behind. I remember going into an army one time. They had all these AK-47s, all nicely lined up in the racks, but they weren't locked. And I was like, wow, in America we keep all our weapons locked. But then in the middle of the floor was this huge boxes of ammunition, small arms ammunition for the rifles. And on top of that, they had a big metal net that was basically uh, locked to the locked to the floor. And the commander explained to me that the ammunition was worth more to him than the weapon because that's all they had to use if or when the Soviet, when the Russians came back. The Lithuanians wanted information on a variety of topics. Military justice, disaster preparedness, staff organization, logistics, military medicine, NCO development, and environmental protection. Interest in military justice stemmed from the lack of a written military legal code and the dependence on corporal punishment for almost all infractions. Its military forces had inherited from the Soviet military a system that was often brutal and sometimes fatal. I'm going to take a break from reading one document and switch to another one here, as it adds more detail about Soviet military discipline. Now this one bit comes from a 1995 issue of Air Power Journal. American and native military personnel have admitted that mistreatment of conscripts persists. The MLT chief in Lithuania reported that it was not uncommon to see black and blue soldiers working in the Ministry of Defense building where MLT had its offices. If evidence of beatings is obvious within the halls of a military headquarters monitored by the American advisory staff, then it seems logical that similar and probably even more brutal punishments are being meted out in the military outposts of the country. So yeah, that was in 1995. And reflecting on the same topic, another section of the journal has this to say, all Lithuanians are somehow Soviet, lamented a member of the National Security Committee of Lithuania's parliament as he tried to explain the difficulty in rooting out the truly Soviet mindsets of the Lithuanian military. It wasn't so much the training that really helped the Lithuanian military, it was the one-on-one -on -one contact and seeing how Americans and the other NATO people interacted with their soldiers, with their uh, uh, non-commissioned officers, and that really helped them develop their military a lot. That was worth more than all the training we did, was just seeing that interaction of how the Western officers were, they interacted with their, their, their people. They were part of a team and not just, I'm an officer, just do as I say, type of thing. And then getting back to the other document, the Ministry of Defense and the senior military leadership understood that the Lithuanian military's way of doing things could not continue. The situation would be especially critical for SCAT, which depended on volunteers. Professional development and a desire to prepare for membership in NATO led the Lithuanians to request information on logistics, staff organization, military medicine, and NCO development. Most Lithuanian senior officers had limited knowledge of Western military organization. The country also had a shortage of officers with experience at top levels of command and staff. Unlike most Western counterparts, the military had no core of professional NCOs. Lithuanian authorities were interested in disaster preparedness because the country faced three distinct threats. The country's flat terrain and wet climate made spring flooding a recurring problem. Secondly, Lithuania's Ignalina nuclear power plant was similar in design to the one which had exploded at Chernobyl in Ukraine in April 1986. And then, the civil security planners also worried about Russia's frequent transport of unknown chemicals on the rail line from Kaliningrad Oblast through Vilnius to the Belarusian border. And so the actual program included all of these diverse interests. 
By the end of March 1994, Lithuanians had participated in 68 events of the American team, including 46 traveling contact teams and 12 familiarization tours. Among the most significant events were a tour by five members of the Lithuanian military to the Pennsylvania National Guard, a series of contact team visits on tours on disaster preparedness and civil military cooperation, including a visit to St. Louis, Missouri during the Great Floods of 1993, and a series of team visits on military justice. Of equal significance, the liaison team tried to include members of the Iron Wolf Brigade and the SCAT on all events. So breaking away again to the Air Power Journal, I found this passage quite interesting and relevant. Even high-ranking commanders were shocked at the relatively comfortable living conditions that are common even for the lowest-ranking troops in the West. A junior member of the Lithuanian General Staff who accompanied some senior members of the staff on a tour of US military facilities in Germany related that these officers were impressed by the presence of hot showers in the barracks and deemed this a good idea to bring back home. We were able to send the Lithuanians to NATO bases to see how they ran at different NATO bases they wanted to go. Um, but most of them wanted to see American bases um, and how the Americans did it. They were really, really curious about how we did things. So we basically interacted with the other the other countries, basically was getting visas for them to go into the, uh, when they would take a, what they call a familiarization trip. And then going back to the other document, as the team's first year in Lithuania ended, the impact of the program could be seen in a number of areas. Barriers between the Iron Wolf Brigade and the SCAT had been reduced, and the professionalism of SCAT headquarters had increased markedly. The liaison team and the Pennsylvania Guard provided much support to the NCO Academy, which the Ministry of Defense established in CONUS. Now there's probably a lot more that could be said, but hopefully this video gives you a good idea of what it was like in the mid and late 90s as the Lithuanian military worked to transition from a Soviet-style force to a Western one. Considering everything that has happened and what Lithuania's military was back then, it's very impressive to see what it is today. And so I suppose if you're a member of Lithuania's military, this topic would be a great conversation starter if you know older members who were around during this time. I have no doubt that it has been a crazy big transformation over the past 30 years to what the armed forces are today. If you made it this far in the video, well, thank you so much for watching. And of course, a huge thanks to retired Major Leitmeier for reaching out and giving up part of his day to speak with me. So I guess I'll see you in a few days for the next video. If you enjoy this channel and want to support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. There's a link down in the description for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching.